Hey everyone, in today's video, I'm going to show you how to create this simple yet awesome animated outline pulse effect. First, we're going to create the speed ramp and then apply the effect and animate it. So let's jump into Resolve. The first step in creating our effect is to create the speed ramp. To do that, right click on the clip and choose Retime Control or use the Control R or Command R shortcut. I'm going to use the shortcut throughout the video, so click on the clip, press Control R or Command R to bring up the controls. Now with loop enabled, play back the video to see where we place our speed points. All right, so I want my first speed point to be right before he leaves the ground. So right here, go to the drop down menu and choose add speed point. Now the second speed point, I want it to be right when he lands, but just with one wheel. So right here, add speed point. Great, now we have our speed points and the retime controls are divided into three independent sections. Now let's change the speed. Since the first part and second part are going to match, I'm going to choose change speed to 200%. So changing speed in DaVinci Resolve works like this. 100% equals the actual speed of the clip, the original speed of the clip. So in our case, 50 frames per second, slow motion. Now, if I want to speed up the clip, I'm going to choose a higher percentage. The higher the percentage, the faster the clip. The lower the percentage, the slower the clip. Now, what I found is that for clips, that are slow motion at 50 frames per second or 60 frames per second, 200% speed works the best. I'm going to choose 200 for the first part and the last part. As for the middle part where he jumps and is in the air, I want it to be slow, so I'm going to choose 50%. Now let's play it back and see how it looks. Perfect, it's exactly what we wanted. Now let's move on to creating the effect. Press and hold Alt or Option key on your keyboard and click on the clip and drag it up to duplicate it. Now select both of them and again Control R or Command R to bring up the controls. Next, I'm going to select only the top clip, the duplicated one, and go to the edges when you see this icon, click and drag it inwards until you reach the speed points for both right and left. We're gonna apply the effect only to the slowed part, so we don't wanna have the beginning and end affected. Next, open the effects tab, go to open effects, search and search for edge detect. Here it is, drag it over our duplicated clip. Good, now we have it applied, close the effects tab, click on the clip and in the video tab in the inspector, go to the composite and change it from normal to add. Now let's go to the effects tab. And here we have our options for our effect. Let me zoom in in the clip a little bit so you can see the mode and what it does. So RGB edges leaves a little bit of color around our colored areas. Grayscale edges turns them into grayscale. So that's self-explanatory. And with grayscale edges, I can have an extra option to choose and change the color. But for our effect, I'm going to leave it to RGB edges. Next, we got edge width, which shrinks down our edges or brings them up and almost fades them away. The brightness of the edges, the gamma, and obviously the blur, so we can blur our edges. We also have this edge mask overlay, but if we enable it, it's gonna blow out the effects, so we're gonna leave it off. Next, filters, advanced options, and global blend. We're not gonna touch these options, so we're gonna leave them as is. Now, let's add some keyframes to the detection options and start animating our effect. So let's place the playhead at the beginning of the jump, increase the gamma so I can get rid of some of these extra noisy detail, and for the pulse part, I'm going to animate the brightness, the edge, and the position of the effect. So let's decrease the brightness and the edge width, set keyframes. And using the arrows on the keyboard, I'm going to go forward four frames and increase the edge width just a little bit and the brightness. Then I'm going to go four frames again. Increase the brightness a little bit more. Again, four frames. Increase the edge width a little more. Jump forward a few frames. Decrease the brightness and the edge width. Go forward again four frames. Increase the brightness. Jump ahead. Increase the edge width and decrease the brightness. Move forward four frames. Decrease the edge width and increase the brightness jump forward, decrease the brightness a little bit and 
set a keyframe also for edge width. Now using the arrows, let's move until the wheel touches the ground. So right here, and now decrease completely the brightness and the edge width. Let's play it back one time. All right, first part of the pulse is done. Now let's move the playhead back at the beginning of the jump and move back to the video tab. Set a keyframe for zoom and position. And this one is gonna be completely random, so we don't need to go frame by frame or be specific, this is gonna be completely random. So let's just jump forward, increase the zoom, move the position to the right, position X, jump forward again, zoom in, move to the left, Actually, let's just keep it zoomed out and try to match the effect to be near our original footage. Zoom in, let's drag it down, move it to the right, jump forward again, zoom back out, move the effect up and to the left, and let's jump forward somewhere around here and click on zoom X or Y doesn't matter and type in one and enter. And for position type in zero for position X and zero for position Y. Let's play it back. All right. Now let's add one finishing touch. Let's bring this up a little bit to make some room. Open the effects tab, go to toolbox and search for adjustment clip. Drag one in, close the effects tab for now, and let's adjust this to be somewhat this size. Place it somewhere in the middle. So right around here, open the effects tab again, and this time click on open effects and search for directional blur and drag it over the adjustment clip. Close out the effects tab and let's animate this directional blur. In the inspector, move to the effects tab and we're going to animate only the blur strength and blur angle. So decrease blur strength completely. Set a keyframe for both. Move forward a little bit. Increase the blur strength. Change the angle. Move forward a little bit. Change the angle again. Decrease the blur strength. Move forward. Increase the blur strength. But not that much. Change the angle. Move forward a little bit. Decrease the blur strength. And change the angle and right before the end of the layer, decrease the blur strength. Now let's play this back. All right, so I'm going to extend the layer to right about here. Let's play this back. All right. Now one last thing, select the duplicated clip, press Ctrl or Command R to hide the retime controls and click on the keyframe menu. And we're going to change from zoom X to position X. Let's take these two keyframes, press and hold shift on the keyboard, click them and let's drag them. Now select the fourth keyframe only, hold shift, drag this in. And let's play this back. All right, this looks better. And now you have a new effect under your belt using your videos or other people's videos to make them more interesting. And if you want to spice up your videos even more, check out this one where I break down the five best built-in transitions that DaVinci Resolve has to offer. And now until next time, take care.